No. These are the benevolent aliens, and they've been here helping us. In fact, I have a picture. I have a picture. Let me reach for it here. I have a picture of one of the aliens been working for the United States Pentagon for the last 58 years. His name is Val, Val Valiant Thor. He's right here. There's my father in the background. This old place, the ready room of the USS Eldridge, Al Bielica has probably explained or maybe even shown you this picture. There's a list of the some of the notable people in it. They're all the atomic bomb scientists of the day, all the uh, time variant uh, experimentalists of the day, all the top physicists of, of that particular day. This was, in this was in August of 1943. Now this guy has not changed one iota in 58 years. Started work, he came here, crashed here or whatever, whether he's under duress or not, he started work for our U.S. Navy and military operations in 1937, either 37 or 38 is what I've been told. So it's for 58 years, this man's been employed, probably under duress. If you don't do as we say, we're just going to use you for alien bait or something, I don't know. But anyway, he basically hasn't changed. He lives for 490 years, what he says his lifespan is. Now, he is supposedly a semi-benevolent, he's a human-looking type person. He has six fingers and six toes, and he's got one oversized heart, one lung, giant lung. Uh, his blood vessels are bigger. He's got copper oxide for blood similar to an octopus. Uh, his brain capacity, 300 centimeters greater than ours. He has a thinking capacity, uh, IQ, if, it, if you were to measure it, be totally off the scale, be about a 1,200 IQ. Um, he speaks 100 languages fluently, alien as well as others. Um, he's a remarkable person. I had a chance to meet him one time. These two pictures, this one first, was taken on board the Eldridge on the 9th of August, 1943, three days before the fatal test, and was a final briefing for interested parties, scientists, and a few Navy people. Almost all of them on this picture were civilian. The man giving the lecture, I do not currently have the name of, but he was a specialist in subatomic particle physics. He was from India, the continent of India, and it was his lecture, and all of the people there were listening to him. The man in the foreground on this side, in the Navy uniform, is Dr. Oscar O. Schneider, the MD, who is officially in charge of the medical aspects of the experiment. The man I'm pointing to is Oscar Schneider, is this one down here. And next to him, Slightly over towards the middle is a man that looks like he has graying hair. It's because of the black and white. It's not gray. It's a very strange individual by the name of Don Thor. He's holding a sheaf of papers in his hand, as you may note. He was a civilian, and we do not know all of his history, except it is alleged that he, as his brother Val, were from Venus. And why he had an a interest in this experiment, we do not know to this day know why he was there. They do not know to this day. Many other people were scientists we cannot identify. In this picture also included was Dr. Vannevar Bush, advisor to the president, and he's lost in the crowd in the background. The man I'm referring to as Vannevar Bush is the one right above my finger. These are very well known. In fact, they're a very ancient group. They're, they're mentioned, in fact, in the Bible, in the book of Job. I can't just give you a chapter and verse, but they are, they are a very old uh, group. And they've been used by many ancient civilizations to signify the approach of, of autumn, winter. Hippocrates recorded that summer begins with their rising and winter with their setting. And Greek temples are aligned to these events. The great pyramids of Egypt are also aligned to the Pleiades. To some African nations, they are known as the Seven Goddesses. In China, they are called the Seven Maidens. 
and they are the seven beneficent spirits of the Hindu Vedas. Curiously, in all these separate cultures, they are always referred to in the female. The Pleiadians told Maya they used females for their first contacts because they appeared less aggressive to early man. The Mayans celebrated the moment when the Pleiades reached their zenith as the most important event in their calendar. Pre-Incan peoples believed their gods came down from the Pleiades. And on the mysterious plains of Nazca, Peru, the Thunderbird marks the plaza of the Pleiades. In other cultures, the cluster is regarded as the place of God's house, the center of heaven. The law of American Indian tribes is full of the Pleiades, which, according to some, stand at the gates of heaven. Historian John M. Hula, a Kiowa Indian, relates one story that survives to this day. It is tied to Devil's Tower in Wyoming. This mountain here, Kiowas lived in this area, and we call it the Toltai, Toltai. Kiowas camped through here, winter camp. And these children were playing. They were playing and they were running along this ledge over here. A giant bear came out of the woods and chased these children. The seven children, seven, seven sisters, we call them. And they came to this one ledge here. And the children got on top of it. This ledge began to grow. It grew out of the ground. As the mountain grew, the bear's claws were scratched in the mountain. And that's what we see today is the grooves up there. And from there, the seven sisters went on up into the sky. And they're up there today. From the dawn of time we came, moving silently down through the centuries, living many secret lives struggling to reach the time of the gathering when the few who remain will battle to the last no one has ever known we were among you until now Sunday, Sunday, Starman, Nordu. 